Hello, hello, hello. This is the Headbang Zulu here, better known as Steve. Um, it's beautiful sunshine outside. That makes a change here in the UK. And uh, soon I'm leaving. So the next time you probably will see me uh, is when I'm down south. I apologise for the way I sound. Um, if you don't know, I'm an asthmatic. And uh, they changed my medication the other day. So I have been quite bad the last couple of weeks. Um, I came close to having an attack once and uh, this stuff it's like a two-in-one and they've got me on it twice a day and uh, it's playing havoc with me vocal cords um, so if I sound a bit funny please forgive me um, I want to do two things today first of all when I woke up this morning I went on to Rob Z's channel and uh, it, the, what the film I watched was when he was holding up the Pink Floyd albums but not just standard Pink Floyd albums, the ones with all the Obi, the Japanese imports and the Japanese promos, and the ones with the Obi strips. And I, I, I'll tell you, brother, I nearly fainted. Um, especially, I don't know which one it was, was one with a blue and one with a green. I've heard, that is like, um, I, uh, I've heard of it, but I've never seen a copy. And um, I just want to thank you very, very much for showing that album. Um, when it comes to Pink Floyd, um, I like the Sid Barrett uh, era, but as soon as he left and Gilmore replaced him, um, so sort of uh, Pink Floyd went downhill, not downhill, but they sort of went, like, like you said, brother, they went a bit, uh, you didn't recognise them, if you know what I mean. But that was the era of Pink Floyd I liked. Um, but uh, Rob decides to do another contest. And what I'm going to do is, this is my official entry, but I shall be doing uh, the other bits as well in a minute. So I'll tell you what they are. But the contest was basically um, say positive things about the VC. Well, that's all I personally can say about it. I haven't had any negative things. Um, the main thing for me is the meeting of the people. And I've made a lot of friends through it, and friends I would not normally have made. But the most important thing is, I've got a lot of uh, music I wouldn't normally have. Um, the best um, part about the BC is all the records that people show. And some of them I know, we all know, but a lot of them, they put you onto the new music. And you, you will listen to something you will never normally listen to. And that's what um, the great thing about the BC is, to me, uh, is the friendship and the showing of the records. Um, I, I love everybody's channel, don't get me wrong. And, uh, you know, I learn something from every single body, everybody's channel. And I hope people learn something from mine, um, like how a mental Englishman is. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, um, you know, that's what I love about the VC. It's just fantastic. And uh, I haven't had any negative um, experiences at all. Um, you know, it, it's great. And, uh, I mean, something really nice happened to me this year, as you, we all know. I walked down to my local record store. I pulled a 7-inch Beyond the Realms, Judas Priest, my favourite record of theirs, in a white promo copy which I showed. And, uh, now, what the chances of doing that, eh? And uh, then I bought it home and showed everybody on the VC. Uh, showed everybody and got some really nice comments. And that's what it's all about, folks. And it's like when Scott shows some of the records he shows. And I think, wow, that sounds good. And people like Greg, uh, Blackmore Rules, and Scott have turned me on to a whole new genre. Um, mainly being Christian metal. If it wasn't for the VC, I would not not, in a million years, have looked into that genre of Christian metal. Because I am a Christian, as you know. And uh, I would not have looked onto that genre, not without Scott and not without Greg. And also, um, I've discovered another new genre of music through Billy Hurst, is Outlaw. And, I, I, you know, some of it's not to my taste, but some of it is. Some of the songs are really, really good. Uh, especially Jamie Johnson I've been listening to a lot late, lately. Because um, he was doing, a, I listened to a Woody Guthrie song, This, this Land Is Your Land. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with that song. Bruce Springsteen did it as well. It's a great song. Just listen to it. Listen to the words. It's just an amazing song. But without Billy Hurst on the um, community, I would never, ever, ever in a million years discovered that music. 
Another channel I want to shout out is uh, Rene in Spain, Holspa. And uh, if anybody hasn't dis is on my channel and hasn't discovered Rene's, go there. Some of the stuff he holds up, and he's turned me onto a new, for made me want to explore the European side of the metal more. Um, you know, and he, he recommended me some record labels where I can go and buy the music, and I've discovered some great Brazilian uh, thrash, which I'm going to show later. Uh, and some great um, European music, which I would never have discovered, you know, without Rene in the VC. And this, to me, is what the VC is all about. That's why I call it. I still call it the community, because we're helping each other um, discover music that we would not normally discover. And uh, that's what the VC is all about, to me, me personally, anyway. Plus, I could wind Greg up and have a laugh with Greg. Uh, he's a lovely guy. Lives in Canada. And, uh, you know, it's like the tropics where Greg lives. I'm really jealous of what sun he gets in the winter. <laughs> Sorry, Greg. But, you know, and I would not have had that without the VC. And uh, Scott, man, you, I love you, brother. You're amazing. And uh, who else is um, Corey's VC channel when he takes me around the record stores in America? And there's Aaron, Metal Theologian, the first channel I ever discovered on here. And some of the stuff he's got just blows my head off, you know, seeing it. I mean, I'm not being thing, but I have got some of the stuff he's got, especially in the funk department. But some of the records he shows, and it's just breathtaking, you know what I mean? Plus the fact it, it, it adds something to my list to, to go and explore um, <clears throat> that genre or that field. It's just amazing. And that's what the VC is to me, Rob. And, uh, you know, long may it continue. That's all I want to say. So you've got my competition entry. It's from the heart. And uh, now um, I just want to go do some other stuff, please. Um, remember last week, I'll do it first. I shan't leave it to last. But you remember last week I won an eBay auction. It was on my birthday. It was my birthday, April the 13th. And uh, it may not be much, but it's a big deal for me because I've been after one of these for ages. And it's getting it at the right price. I mean... I paid 10 quid for this copy, uh, American dollars, round about 14, 15, give or take, and it's a fair price to me for this album. But some of these albums, they tend to go for huge money, of sort of, you're paying through your nose. And this is it. I've been after this record for, you know, just get it at a decent price. And it's the Testament live at Eindhoven in Holland. And uh, it was recorded, I know the date of this one, 1987, I'm sure of it. Uh, yes, at, at the Dynamo Open Air Festival in Eindhoven. Um, if you know your history, Eindhoven was famous as uh, Bridge Too Far in World War Two. But that's the album there. But to me, it's really, really great. I got this for a tenner. I mean, this album is in decent condition as well. And it's exactly as described by the vendor. And I, I put my limit on it. Not feet, I've cleaned it, and I put my limit on it. Um, and I got it. I won it in the auction. But that's the vinyl part. I've given it a cl good clean up, and uh, I'm going to play it in a minute. But that was my holy grail item. That's um, testament live at Eindhoven. Uh, I'm still seething about the Wolf Spain one. I've missed for two quid. <coughs> Also, Wolfsbane, I believe, are touring at the moment with Blaze Bailey. Uh, whether they have toured or they are touring, but a friend of mine went to see them. But as per usual, I missed them. Um, I just want, I also went on a bit of a record hunt yesterday. Um, the washing machine or washer or whatever you, you call them. I think in America you call them washers, but we over here call them washing machines blew up last week. So I had to go and buy one the other day. And that was installed it this morning. It was getting a bit whiffy round here because I hadn't done any laundry since sort of last week. Um, so uh, while that was being done, I went on a bit of a record hunt, and uh, I picked up a couple of bargains. And uh, I just want to talk about um, what I've been listening to and what I've got as well. Um, thanks to Greg, um, I thought I had this in my collection. It must have I must have had it nicked. And that's Judas Priest's Live Vengeance in 82. And uh, it's got all their big hits like the Hellion, Riding on the Wind, and all the massive hits, Diamonds and Rust. 
and it only cost me about fiver with postage and packaging. Um, it's just one I thought I had, but I hadn't, and Greg re um, reminded me of it, and I purchased it. I also got this one, which is called Electric Eye. I don't know what this is. I think it's live show, because there's two on the back. Whether I've got both of them, I don't know. But I shall definitely be watching them. So that's like a new acquisition. Um, I've been listening to a lot of music this week. And I'm not going to show you them all, because that will probably take up a whole video on its own. But the first one I've given a spin is this band, Violator. It's Brazilian Thrash, and it's awesome. I thoroughly enjoyed this CD, and I uh, absolutely love it. And it's got some cracking stuff on here. Um, I think it sings about the environment, but if you think it's like Brazilian bands like Sepultura and that sort of stuff, you're on the right lines. But I'm really enjoying this CD. I had a bit of a thing where I couldn't remember where I saw it. Then Chris uh, Dude 73 or Dude 76 told me he held it up. But I don't know if Chris has played his yet, but this album absolutely is awesome. I love it. And I've been playing that. Another one I've been playing, which was absolutely amazing, and John Bitbot Boom did a record, a record, a video, and he was talking about uh, records that rip your face off. This one will. It's a new wave of British heavy metal band called Avenger John. I don't know if you've heard of them, but you've got uh, Killers, which is an Iron Maiden cover. There is some cracking stuff on here. And two or three of these records will definitely, definitely rip your face off. Um, I believe this CD called The Slaughter Never Stops was uh, issued in 2004. I may be wrong, but that was their 30th anniversary or something, and they made a comeback. Whether they're still performing now, I haven't got a clue. But if anyone wants some good new wave of British heavy metal, they sound a bit like Iron Maiden and Judas Priest, uh, them sort of influences. But definitely by this band, Avenger, it's absolutely face-ripping stuff. It's good. Uh, another album I've been listening to as well is one that Scott sent me. Um, this, I was corrected, isn't a Christian um, band. It's called, I think they're called Within the Veil, is it? Uh, that's interesting. A Fear of God, Within the Veil. But this album is amazing. And also, it's Dawn Crosby's on vocals, female fronted. And it's a, I'm really enjoying this uh, album. I've had it on quite a few times. Thoroughly enjoy it. Thanks, Scott. But uh, I put it in a case, but I have been playing it as well. Uh, I've been listening to a lot of other stuff as well. The music hasn't stopped here. But as I say, I'm just showing you a few bits and pieces. Now, I want to show you my charity shop find. And for the first time in the history of the channel, the first the one's going to be a film. It was breathtaking, I tell you. Uh, I've got this CD. Um, it's called Born to be Wild. Yeah. Sorry, that was the door knocking. Nobody wants to get in. That was 40 pence. Uh, in English, that's about 70 cents. Uh, in American, 65, 70 cents. And for what you get on here, you get Girls School, Race with the Devil, Status Quo, Mungo Jerry, Black Sabbath, uh, Nazareth, Nazareth, Razmaraz, uh, Motorhead, Hawkwind, uh, a lot of heavy metal rock uh, action on there. Gregor liked this album. That's the track listing there. I hope you can see it okay. I apologise if you can hear a knocking. It's the door uh, by me that's getting blown by the wind. But I hope you can see that track listing okay on this camera. But there's some killer music on here. And for what I pay for it, I wasn't going to leave it in, in the shop. Um, I like Hawkwind. I could have seen him live this year, but I was a day late. Uh, they're a Staffordshire band, I believe. I can't remember where. I knew they came with Staffordshire, and uh, I think that was the track Lemmy, Lemmy out of Motorhead sung on, and that was their only hit single before he went into Motorhead. So that's a bit of trivia for you. But yeah, it's got some cracking, cracking stuff on here. But yeah, it's definitely for what I pay for it. I'll listen to it. And now I'm going to show. I don't know. I've never done this on this channel, but we're going to hit some DVD action. And one of my favourite films of all time is The Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring. And this is the extended edition. Now, I don't know if you remember it, but the first edition came out. Then they had a big uh, extended edition. 
I could not afford it at the time. It was too much. Plus, for the fact, I could spend the money on records, so I didn't get one. And uh, every time I see it at the charity shops, it's a fiver. And uh, I'm not going to tell you how much it cost me, but I'm going to show you it first. It's the posh box with the four DVDs in it. You get the booklet, some booklet action as well. And uh, <coughs> where I live, uh, the two towers, I'll tell you that in a minute actually. But you get the whole thing. And I, I absolutely fell when she, I, I thought he had charged me at least a £5 note for that. He said you could have it for 40 English pence. I went on my phone this morning and converted it. In American, that is 70 cents. And I was in its absolutely pristine condition. It looks like it's brand new and somebody's just took the surfaced vein off it. Um, I just can't believe it, I tell you. Uh, to me, it's, that's why I'm telling everybody. It's just an amazing fine uh, for what I pay for it. Uh, yeah, I just pulled the booklet out so I can show you. But uh, these in England, you normally come across them. They're very expensive. But you've got all the um, bits and pieces there. It tells you about the films and it's got the nice booklet. But I'm a big fan of Lord of the Rings, so that's what I thought I'd show everybody it. Uh, but yeah, but we don't even know about Lord of the Rings. But in the second film, when he kicks the helmet at the very first, he actually broke his foot in real life when he did that, and he had to film the second one with a broken foot. But it also, if you go to Birmingham, you can actually see the tower where the two towers he took the, I think he, Tolkien lived in Birmingham but the actual tower where he got all the idea from was that actually in Birmingham I've walked past it and every time I see it I think that's where they got the, you know, the Lord of the Rings from I like the second lot but I didn't think they were nowhere near as good as the first and it was a bit too long for my liking for what they tried to do they sort of drew it out too much anyway uh, folks I'm, I hope you enjoyed this offering today I hope Greg the Egg, Blackmore Rules, the great man from Canada, uh, hasn't disowned me after the last video. Because he didn't comment, so I thought he may have disowned me. But, uh, <laughs> ah, Greg. But uh, anyway, folks, I've got to go now. Cause I've got to pack me clothes, do me washing, and uh, stuff like that associated with going away. Uh, but peace out, folks. Have